He's your MLS Player of the Month for March, so I guess he's your reigning Player of the Month. From the Los Angeles Galaxy, it's Mike McGee. Mike, how are you? I'm good, Greg. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Although, Mike, I'm, I'm on hold waiting to talk to you. There's, there's Chivas USA highlights in the background on the hold music. What's going on, man? Wait, wait, there's what? Like, when I'm on hold, I was waiting to talk to you. So, while we were on hold, they were showing, like, the loop of buying Chivas USA tickets. Oh, man, that's Justin. Is Justin, you still on the line? Yeah. I am. That's the, the lovely Home Depot. <laughs> Mike, you are, the reigning, home, you are the reigning MLS player of the month. Use some of that juice to get it all Galaxy on the hold music, please. Yeah, I know. You'd think so, right? <laughs> so how are you? How are things? Oh, things are really good. I'm down in Manhattan Beach in the town right now. God, look at you. Look I'm going to I'm I'm walk into my car where it's quiet, but I was walking through a zone that never gets any of uh, any so. I, 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 I'm a little upset, dude, because I'm, I'm wearing long pants. I, got, I wore jackets to work today, um, and now you're telling me, eh, I'm just walking through Manhattan Beach. Sorry, sorry, bad area. You know how the beaches are, right? <laughs> it's, too, it's so sunny, I'm getting bad. Uh, <laughs> Sunspots are killing me here. How, how, yeah, much, how much do you, uh, do you bust, it, bust balls to your friends and family back home in Chicago when you are living the L.A. lifestyle? Well, I've, I've, I've stopped busting their balls, but literally when I first when I first came out here, it was a uh, it was pretty much all, all I talk about. Obviously, there's a little bit there's little jabs here and there, but for the most part, I, I try to just leave them alone. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel bad for them. Yeah, I mean, after a while, it's not fun anymore because at the end of the day, you are living in L.A. and they are in freezing cold Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Don't get me wrong. I, I think Chicago is the best city in the world, but especially around this time of the year, I. Uh, it's too easy for me to, uh, you know, give them banter when they're in the 30 degree weather. Now, are you at the point yet where going and playing in cold weather matches, does that now negatively affect you? Cause I'm sure when you first started, it was like, whatever, cold weather, but are you now LA acclimated in the negative way as well? Uh, slightly, but I think for games, it's still, it's still better for me. Obviously the Brazilians are terrible in cold weather, but um, you know, I still I still do better for some guys. Well, the most of the time when I when I realize that when I go home and uh, when I go back home in December, I remember back when I was younger, I would never need a jacket. I would never never even notice it. And now since I since I moved to LA, every year every year the winter's still a little colder. Do you? I can't remember the last cold weather match you played. Did you rock short sleeves? Are you still doing the short sleeves? Or are you long sleeve and gloves now? Last year in the playoffs was pretty cold in Seattle. I did uh, I did short sleeves. Um, that was the rainy game. Um, that I think we lost two to one. But yeah, I did. I, I have to do short sleeves always. You you talked about the Brazilians and how they they don't really do well in the cold climates. Do when do they start their their whining about it? Is it week of looking at weather reports? Is it is it in the locker room? And then what what does the bitching consist of? I don't think they even noticed it. I don't even think for them it's not even almost not even a possibility. So they won't notice it. Right until about the time we get off the plane, and then it, it hits them like <laughs> it, it, it hits them upside the head, and it's, it's pretty pretty comical actually because they just I don't think they understand like really what's going on. Uh, I I was just listening to an interview that you did. You helped out Ryan Seacrest. I guess you co-hosted the morning show for for that segment uh, with the prom thing. That was very cool of you. It was nice of you to do that. A co-host might be a bit strong. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, it was cool. Um, uh, I think the kid won a. A limo and a dress and all all kind of haircuts and and everything. So that's that's pretty. I wish I had that. Yeah, but the cool thing was he Seacrest is rattling off everything that he won, which was a lot of basically got his prom paid for. Uh, and he was just like the whole time, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. But as soon as you come <laughs> on, he gets all excited when you tell him you're getting the VIP treatment. I know. I didn't want to call out Seacrest, but no, I was thinking I was thinking the exact same thing. So that was, that was definitely cool. <laughs> Um, and so then it got me thinking, did you ever go to your prom? I know you went to your girlfriend's prom. That was a very famous story about scoring the first goal and then dancing. But did you ever get to go to your prom? I, know, I think I went to two proms, but no, I, I didn't get to go to uh, – well, both both schools I went to, but it was it was past. Because when I went to Bradenton, I guess I finished high school and all of high school in about two and a half years, so – I think it would have been impossible to have one. So it was my, all, everyone I grew up with in, in Elmhurst, Illinois. I, w- I went to that prom, and then uh, I went to one in Florida as well. But that was kind of a 
what wasn't much of a problem. Well, first of all, very nice humble brag to you to throw that in very offhandedly. I graduated high school in two and a half years, so I'm not really sure. That was very nicely done. No, nah, it's not. It's not what you think. It, <laughs> it has nothing to do with me being smart or uh, getting ahead in my studies. As much as I, as much as I like to believe that, but but that the whole Bradington schooling thing was kind of a. Um, I bypassed a lot of work that other kids had to do. Luckily, so wait, Bradenton had a prom. Uh, looking back, I'm not sure if it was called. We, yeah, I think we, I think we called it a prom. There was that, a, or we just made up another dance and yeah, we there, all just made ourselves believe it was prom to feel like feel like normal kids. Well, pardon my ignorance. Did they? Ha- are there girls at Bradenton? <laughs> I can't tell if you're taking a cheap shot of me or not. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm actually yeah. asking if they're... No, oh, wait, there's there's a tennis academy there. There's all the tennis girls. Yeah, the tennis girls. Uh, which, who, who weren't bad looking at all. Um, and there's, there's even... There's soccer, there's, they had soccer teams there. They had lots of tennis players. Um, and then there was, there was like local schools and stuff. So all yeah, right. there, there was girls. All right, so but the, but your your move was crashing your old high school's prom. That was that was your prom, basically. Yeah, that was that was my prom. For sure. So we we just got the phone with Arlo White, and uh, he called the match obviously against uh, Sporting Kansas City that you guys just played in, and and he said he was it was talking to you, and and I wasn't going to ask his question because I didn't know if you were going to give me a, a a legit answer or you would just kind of say I don't really know, but I I asked him to explain your kind of evolution, especially in the last few years, from a guy that was in the league to now a guy that's excelling in the league, and one of the things that he said that you mentioned was the fact of when you were a younger player, you didn't really put a full 90 in. And, and one of the things he said that was interesting was you, you said that if you scored a goal uh, at the be- and early in the match, you kind of felt like your job was done and the rest of the match kind of floated through. Is is, is that kind of what was what the gist of what you said? Uh, yeah, that's accurate. I, mean, I think there was just such a, there's such a big difference between the atmosphere in New York and the, and the atmosphere in, in, in LA, obviously. And, you know, somewhere in the middle of there, I had a bad injury that, um, you know, kind of made things a little, a little clearer and put, put soccer into perspective for me. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it was just, uh, I, I, I was kind of, obviously you grow up as a kid playing soccer and you kind of walk around until you get your chance and you score a goal and you're happy and, you know, you try to score another goal. And, um, and, and being a kid who's, Five foot, five foot nine, 150 pounds. Um, you know who who doesn't have much speed. Um, you know you, you have to do a lot more than that to stay on the field and to be to be effective in the league. So, I guess you know the, the sooner I learned that, obviously the better. Well, I'm not going to let that one comment you made pass without asking you to explain it. What what's the difference between a New York atmosphere and an LA atmosphere? Just the. Uh, but also keeping in mind, I mean, keeping in mind, you were of, you were playing a giant stadium at that point, not at Red Bull Arena, so that probably hurts no, the atmosphere. I, we, I, I trained day in and day out on turf in Giant Stadium, and when we wouldn't train there, we'd drive 20 minutes to another turf high school stadium that was somehow worse turf than New York. <laughs> and, I mean, I think by the time I was 21 years old, I was the longest tenured player on the on the Metro Stars or Red Bull or whatever we were at the time, and the front office was changing. I was in it for six years. I think I had six different head coaches, and um, you know, there was just there there was not much to there wasn't much of a a blueprint of how to be a good pro and how to how to do the right things. And and, and a steady veteran player who was there from from day one who could kind of just put me in my place for all the all the younger all the other younger guys too, for that matter. And just you know, obviously that sounds like a lot of excuses, but you know, looking back, it's it's LA has everything that New York didn't, and New York's obviously doing great now. Red Bulls coming yeah. in, um, you know they got the stadium, and they're trying to do all the right things. But LA's doing it, been doing it for a long time. And you, from the day I got here, it's so easy to see what what a professional environment is. Do you still keep in touch with uh, Eddie Gavin? No, I don't. But obviously, when I, we're lockers next to each other, so I mean, when I see him, it's it's uh, it's it's always a good face to see, and we. We, we laugh and, and tell funny stories, but you know he, he's he's another guy who um, you know kind of flourished once he once he got out of New York. Yeah, and and the reason I brought him up is you two were in a very similar situation and and kind of still are where it was like you started out really really young and so people now think that you're older than you are and both of you now are are have now come into your own 
as you are hitting your prime. And so I guess the question is, if if you had to do it again, would you, would you lay it out the same way in that starting as a teenager in the league, or would you try the college route? I personally would not have tried the college route. I mean, it would have been, I think it would have been fun and, and interesting to, to do all the, uh, you know, stuff college kids get to do, but, you know, school was never really my thing. And then on top of that, I just, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be the, be the player I was today or, um, you know, there's, there's so many things that even, even in my worst times in soccer, there was so many, you know, amazing things I got to do and see. And, um, you know, even when the negative things kind of come around it, 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 it's it's uh you know for me personally it's it ended up uh you know kind of a blessing in disguise. Yeah, and I feel like that if you had taken a few years to figure, you would have taken a few years as you first got in the league, no matter what. And it's better to do that at sixteen, seventeen, eighteen than twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, and then you're next thing you know you're thirty two, and then finally figuring out whether as whereas you are now twenty eight, it's like oh, I figured it out, and I've still got a lot of prime left in me. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and like I said, you know, these everything that's happened to me, bad and good and and everything. I know it's pretty cliche to say, but um, you know, it all kind of happens for a reason. And you know, luckily I've I've uh, you know learned from my mistakes and um, you know got to celebrate a couple of championships and um, you know seen a lot of things that a lot of college kids haven't seen. It seems as if before Landon got back, you were relishing the role of being one of the guys um and without landon without beckham you you kind of filled that void and, and and took up the mantle is that something that you consciously thought of in the off season as as things started to progress or is it just one of those things where you were out just you're just out playing and these things are happening no i yeah i definitely made a mental note of it i mean obviously um robbie's only played he just played in his third you know we've had six games robbie's only played in three of them Landon's only played in two of them, and David's obviously um, living lavishly in, in France. So <laughs> I, I made a I made a note to myself that you know I gotta I gotta just score goals and take chances, and um, you know kind of when those guys are playing, sometimes your your main focus is on you know trying to get them the ball or, or trying to do their defensive work, or which is correct because those guys do so many special things no one else can. But with them not there, I you know I, I took it as my my chance to. Um, you know, shoot the ball and do do some things that um, uh, were, were better for me to try to try to get a goal and do do that aspect because the team the team definitely needed it. Mike, I'm going to tell you something that you might not be aware of. Beckham is actually not making he's not drawing a salary for Paris Saint Germain, so he's not probably living very lavishly. He's probably on a strict strict budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you guys were uh, I'm in Washington D.C. You guys were in town not too long ago, and not to play, you were here to hang out uh, and do some FaceTime with the president. How was that for you? Well, that was that. That's amazing. Um, you know, there's little things like that that kind of uh, you know open your eyes a little bit and realize how how blessed you are, and um, you know, it's kind of along those same lines of just doing things that. You know, you, you never really dream of doing it. And then to get to do it twice is, um, you know, it's pretty unique and cool. And, you know, I think, you know, starting from the day I retire to the, to the day I die, it'll be one of those things that, um, you know, a story that will keep popping up, which is, um, which, which is, you know, amazing, I think. That seems like one of those things that when you when it's on the schedule, you're like, ah, I'm in Toronto. I just want to fly home and now I've got to fly somewhere else to do this and then go back. And we did it last year. But then once you get into the White House, you're like, oh, snap. OK, now this is really cool again. You're, you're exactly right. And it's, I mean, we all, we all feel the same way, you know, just don't want to get home. And it's the same way with, uh, you know, when we, we, we call these friendlies with like Real Madrid or, you know, we kind of see them and it, it seems like a pain or an inconvenience at the time. And all of a sudden you you know, game day comes around and you step on the field and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's so special. And, you know, like it's just one of those things that, that most people don't get to do. And you, you definitely cherish it. Did you get to speak with him? Chicago boy to Chicago boy. Uh, I got to speak with him, but no, I didn't, I didn't bring it up. Not Why not? Uh, you got to find the thing that gets you guys together. He might've asked you to shoot some hoops with him. I feel like every single person from Chicago probably says that to him. <laughs> so I'm, like I said, not really my style. One day, I'll bump into him one day in Chicago on the streets, and I'll, I'll let him know. Uh, so what did you say to him? Uh, oh. Hello. Hello, nice sir. Again, <laughs> nothing, nothing, uh, no, nothing cool or crazy or nothing to uh, 
right home by. Are you, and I, because I, I haven't seen the picture, but are you prominently featured in the, the photo, like the official photo with, with him, like with you guys? I must not have been, because the year before I was, and I think I got about 400 texts, and this year I didn't get in. Get I got a couple, but so yeah, I must not have been in the been in the uh, the main photo. Stupid Omar getting in front of me, towering over top of me, blocking me out. I know. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't see over Omar. So. <laughs> Mike, thank you, man. Um, I'll let you get back to Manhattan Beach. I know you've probably got a lot of important things going on, walking around on the beaches and stuff. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I got. I still. Got, I still have here at Starbucks. Too, so. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate you giving us some time. All right, thanks, Rick. For more show information, go to pitchpass.com.